I can, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So again, hi, everyone. My name is Masi, and I will be the host for today's webinar. I hope you're having a great Saturday. Um, today is going to be the 264th weekly webinar of Harmony Plus. Also for friends uh, in the clubhouse, please, if you'd like to talk to us, um, feel free to share the coordinator Tom QR code and uh, on Tom's profile picture and join us on clubhouse. All right, today's tonight's webinar, as the title show, is about uh, Mark's journey to MIT, LunchX, which is one of the top summer school. And I'm really excited to have Mark as our speaker tonight. Um, I did have the pleasure to teach Mark um, through FEC, and is one of the, our most outstanding students. And before we dive into today's webinar, uh, I would like to quickly introduce Harmony Plus uh, for who of you is not familiar with them. Um, Harmony Plus is an official partner of legal university and institution in the United States, such as Berkeley, Stanford International Research, Research Institute, and San Jose State University. And uh, we are committed at Harmony Plus to providing top-notch programs to outstanding local and international students. Um, we follow an hybrid learning platform um, we aim to upgrade education by creating high quality hybrid learning platform and providing online and offline courses taught by top faculties. We also have received endorsement from legal universities. Most importantly, students who have taken our courses really enjoy continuous improving, improvement, not only in school, but also in their career life. Some university that Harmony Plus um, students have been admitted to include uh, Yale University, Stanford University, UCLA, Berkeley, USC, Michigan University, NYU, Princeton, and uh, Illinois. In terms of our pro programs, um, Harmony Plus offers academic pro programs, soft skill enhancement programs, and professor research program. Summer of 2021 is approaching soon, so feel free to contact us after the webinar if your kids need more guidance or extracurriculum activities. Um, here you can see like um, overview of some of the most successful program that we offer. So again, if you're interested in any of the, those, this program, please feel free to reach out to us. And then today's agenda. Yeah, so we're gonna, today we're gonna go over few um, topic. We're gonna start talking about uh, Mark and my journey on legal entrepreneurship skills. So then we're gonna go over the application for MIT Lunch X. So what is MIT Lunch X, uh, the timeline, uh, some of the preparation material, as well as some fact about the application process and uh, uh, deep dive in the interview process. Also, um, we're gonna go over and both Mark and I, we're gonna provide suggestion and tips on how to get into top summer schools. Now a quick introduction about myself, the host of today. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, um, been a serial entrepreneur for pretty much my entire life. Started my first company when I was in high school um, and I got my first funding at the age of 18. Uh, I'm originally from Italy, as you guys can probably hear from my accent. So if at any point, by the way, it's not too clear, let us know in the chat. Um, I moved to Silicon Valley with my first startup. And after that, I've been an entrepreneur since then. I've had several successful company as well as a lot of company that fail. Um, some of the successful company I run include Upload, which is an AI tool that allowed content creator to monetize from their social influence. Kleist, which is a community owned and AI driven social media. And Sensetech, which is a sensor company, PH sensor company winning several government founded competition. Um, and most recently, I am the CEO of Metabob, which is an AI tool that cut the bug in time in half. Um, and uh, I also had experience in the investment community. I did work for a few VC. So I know what it takes for young entrepreneurs to get the funding they need. Then we'll have uh, our guest, Mark. Um, this is just a nutshell of some of the startup I started, as mentioned. So again, Metabob is on my recent, uh, most recent venture, and Sway Up, Kleist, Marflex, those are all companies that I started within the past 10 years 
again, most of them had a good outcome, some of them not, but again, failure is part of the game, I guess. All right, Mark is our great guest speaker. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Massey. So hi, everyone, I'm Mark. Um, I obviously, I was admitted into MIT Launchx this year, which is why I'm here, but I was also part of the Harmony Plus FEC program, as well as UX design and the public speaking program. So I think these were very important programs to me and I had a great time. Awesome. So for, I guess uh, most of the audience may already be familiar with MIT Lunch X, but for who is not familiar with the program, here is a quick overview about what the program is. Um, the program itself, the goal of the program is to provide students the skill and mindset to start real companies. So they wanna provide all the necessary information and training for young entrepreneurs to actually build their product and actually start and succeed with real company. Their most the signature program is their summer program, which prepare specifically high school students for real world um, success through entrepreneurship. They bring ambitious youth together from around the globe to be start up on a team of peer founders. So one of the great benefits is meeting peer um, entrepreneurs, people from your age that have the same, share the same goals. Students spend intensive uh, intense weeks of the program working with industry experts, mentors, and learning to solve problems in meaningful and viable ways. So that is the goal of the MIT launch. And in order to be selected, their criteria first in terms of grade, the applicants needs to be between 9 to 12th grade when they submit their application. There are no minimum grade or activity involvement requirements. And specifically, MIT launch X is looking for candidates that show initiative, are action-oriented, um, coach, um, coachability is a huge uh, factor for them and fit in with their values. So really they want to see candidates that show passion, that want, that's it's their goal and wants to uh, become entrepreneurs, uh, students who show that they have what it takes to become successful in entrepreneurship. Um, which is obviously something that not everyone has, but um, they want to really look for the soft skills needed to become successful entrepreneur, um, looking for impact or so to provide impact to the community, committed to the program and to their goal, and also team players, because one of the most important aspects of every entrepreneur is to be able to work with the team and to be able to coexist with our founders. Um, I know that we are getting a lot of questions from the audience and we'll have definitely time to address all of them uh, during the end of, before the end of the webinar. Um, also great applicants have a proven record um, in working successfully with team to create impact. So wherever you can show to demonstrate that you have um, experience and you are um, fit to work with the team, then that will provide um, great value to the committee. Okay, now, um, in terms of we receive several questions from parents, um, the first one, which we believe it was important to address is that we know if you want to get into this top summer program, you need to have entrepreneurial experience. How do you get entrepreneurial experience, right, especially if you are high school students. Now, um, maybe we can start having Mark giving his opinion on that and I can also provide my answer to that as I started my first company while I was in high school too. What do you think right. Mark? Uh, yeah I'll answer that first. So in my opinion there's many ways to gain entrepreneurial experience. So for example uh, where I live in Toronto my school has a very large student government. So you could try running for an executive position in your school in whatever club, you know, chess club, debate clubs, the swim team, that would count as entrepreneurial experience because it gives you the leadership that ultimately I think LaunchX is looking for. And the second way or the second major way you can gain entrepreneurial experience is just remember when you're at school, there's always things you can do to, you, you can always bring new things to your school. You know, it doesn't matter if you're only one student, you can, you, maybe you can get your friends and organize I don't know, a debate club, which is actually what I did at my school. But 
I guess organizing and looking for opportunities opportunities that are already in clubs at your school those two ideas would probably be the best way to get entrepreneurial experience because it's the most common given that you're at school yeah that is a that is a great suggestion if i can top uh, your answer i think uh, based on my experience i mean first of all having the opportunity like to be an entrepreneur the key is just to solve problem that people experience right so you don't really need much experience to become an entrepreneur you can just try it and do it yourself right when i was younger uh, when i was in my teens my goal wasn't really to become an entrepreneur but it was more like a consequences of my passion in fact what i did when i started my entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurial career i just really solved the problems that it was close to me so again i wasn't specifically thinking oh, i want to be an entrepreneur in my life but i just wanted to solve a problem i and my friend experience in a valuable way to provide value to the people around me and that's what i did and that's the suggestion i give to most students uh, you don't need to spend much time learning how to become an entrepreneur but you just need to start by solving problems around you and by doing that you will build experience because you will learn what it takes to build something valuable to other people, which is really the core of entrepreneurship. So that's my suggestion to you. Just instead of spending too much time starting to be an entrepreneur, just look at problems that you and people around you are experiencing and try to find a way to solve in those problems. And ideally, the best way to do it is talking to people like you that are experiencing those problems and trying to learn really their challenges in solving it and uh, that will do it uh, by doing that you will be able to um, build up your entrepreneurship career and um, yeah and nowadays there are a lot of programs as well such as FEC um, that give you the opportunity to also meet students like you to work with uh, that's one of our goal at FEC to not just giving you the necessary skill set and content to succeed, but also to meet peers like you to build projects that you're passionate about it and to solve problems that both of you care about. I hope we answer the question. All right. Um, we have a few other questions from parents. Um, next question is about lunch X acceptance rate, which is about 15 to 20 percent. The questions from the parents is what lead you specifically, Mark, to the mission? Um, now, we can first go over the timeline for it. Um, maybe can you provide a little timeline in terms of um, what, the, um, what was your experience? Yeah, uh, first of all, I just want to address that even though the admission rate is really low, it would benefit you if you just didn't focus on that statistic in the first place because it's not really helpful to your application and you can't really change that number and it just kind of casts a negative outlook on yourself so i actually didn't know it was 15 percent. it was in the first place i didn't think it was that low but what you want to do in your application just to make yourself stand out whether you know it's from the personal video or the interview, which I'll go over right now. So you have, so for early admissions, which is what I apply to, you have until the end of December to apply. So the application consists of a recommendation letter, some general information about yourself, and then some school transcripts, so like your report cards. And then there's some fun stuff at the end, which uh, you get to make a one minute video about who you are and why you would be the right person for launch x and you also get to take a personality test and kind of self-evaluate yourself on your learning skills so i'd say all of that took me around seven or eight hours so it should just take about one weekend or a week to fill out awesome do you also have like some uh, fun uh, like uh stories about your application or something you'd like to share yeah um, i don't know if 
maybe I'll send it to everyone in the chat later, but the personality test for me was really fun. It's the 16 personalities test or the Myers-Briggs personality test. Um, the results are extremely accurate. Uh, though they're so accurate, you're gonna get a bit creeped out because I think this is also a really important part to the LaunchX application because they wanna know your learning style and that way they can build you into teams with other people. Yeah, I think that would probably be my favorite part. Okay. Um, yeah, that uh, sounds like uh, definitely an interesting experience for everyone to do. And also, I did a few personality tests, to be honest. When I, like a few years ago, I was pretty skeptical in the beginning about uh, the value of them. But when I actually did that, I was quite shocked about how accurate was that. So it's actually a suggestion I give to most people. Um, all right, also, I know that we went over, um, you participate to FEC, uh, so I'd like to get a bit more, um, like just uh, in terms of your feedback, your experience about FEC, you also I remember, I, as I was your instructor, we, had, uh, um, we spent a lot of time into building your MVP, minimum viable product, to be able to test your assumptions, talk to customer. So it would be great to see first, Again, you can uh, touch base on how FEC have impacted your application process at MIT LunchX. And also if you can maybe show us, I don't know, maybe your, the app you built and how that uh, impacted the decision, your opinion from the committee of LunchX to get accepted or not. Yeah, for sure. So I think the best place to start would just be a general overview of the FEC program. So actually I, uh, did the July 2020 session. Before that, I had zero interest or experience in entrepreneurship. I was actually bent on just going into political science, but because of the pandemic, I joined FEC and it was an awesome experience. I guess just the whole experience of working with your team to create a product or service and then actually testing it and going back and revising it, it's a process that helps you grow not only as an entrepreneur, but also as a person, because you have to be able to adapt to customer feedback and work in teams, which some might like to work in teams like me, but for other people, it poses to be a bit of a challenge, but it's a good challenge nonetheless. Um, so an important part I wanted to focus on specifically in the FSC program was the customer interaction. Um, I think this would probably be the most realistic part of entrepreneurship. I know even though this is only a program, it still provides a sliver of the real world. Because when uh, when I was in interviewing people, uh, some of the feedback was kind of harsh for my product, but that also kind of simulates the feedback that you'll get in real life. And what you can do with that feedback is you can go back, and I like I've already said, you know, you can kind of rebuild but you can also take that feedback and evaluate your own product or service. So that was a really fun part for me just to interview customers. Um, I'm sure some of you would like to talk to people too. Awesome. Um, can you also maybe walk us through the, uh, uh, I know that again, I was quite impressed with the app you made with your team. Do you want to maybe show it to the audience to see um, some of the progresses you have made through the program and what are you expecting uh, to bring this up in the future? For instance, maybe you can tell us your goals uh, for this app specifically and just walk us through it. Uh, yeah, so before I do that, I just want to mention one more thing. So with FEC, I also learned that, well, how, how to be innovative because you need to essentially, you need to, like Massey said, you need to solve problems through innovation. And again, teamwork, which is, I think my teamwork has improved significantly. So I guess if you attend the FEC program, those two functions or focuses are the cornerstone of the program. And it's highly recommended, in my opinion. Uh, so now moving on to the apps. So I know there's quite a bit of content here to take in. So let's look at the left where it says workouts. So this was made using Glide app and it was for the FEC program. And this was a quick little build with a lot of 
pre-built designs. But essentially, when I was in FEC, my team and I created an exercise app with a social integration. So you can exercise with your friends online and sort of compete against each other to give friendly competition. Uh, that's just a little sliver of what I've done there. And over on the right, so let's look at the bottom where there's uh, sort of white phone screens with kind of black and white text and a few pictures. So that actually was in fact from the UX design program I attended after FEC. So this is basically the very first draft of the app I created. And then moving on to the top where there's like a black picture with a lot of purple lines. Though that's the actual wireframing of the app that I've created. So it looks really complicated, but when you're actually prototyping your app, it's pretty simple. And over on the right is kind of the good copy of the app. Um, that one, so let me just, yeah, let me address the problems my app solve. So the exercise app, this was created when the pandemic was still a few months in, but the problem is that exercise isn't really an important thing, in my opinion, that society recognizes. And furthermore, it's people have started to lose con uh, lose their friends because from my from my personal experience, I, I don't really keep in touch with my friends anymore. So, well, that was before, but now I obviously do. But this app would allow you to exercise with your friends virtually. So just to give a very quick summary, if you do an exercise for a certain amount of minutes, you get a certain number of points and then your friend would do the same thing. It's kind of like a points system to kind of motivate each other, but also staying in shape. And the, uh, the movie app that I just uh, mentioned. So this is also, so you'll notice that my apps are kind of based on social interaction because I love to talk to people. So this app would allow you to watch movies. So you might think that it's basically like Netflix. Why would I make this? Well, so the problem is Netflix or Hulu or Disney plus or whatever, they don't allow you to eat food, which might sound like a weird thing to say, but with watching movies, you know, you can go to the theater with your friends and kind of have a good time, eat popcorn and have a drink, but that's not really possible during the pandemic. So what this app would allow you to do would be, it would be kind of like Zoom or a Facebook live party where you watch a movie, but there's also a food section integrated into it. So you can order food, goes to everyone's house at the same time. It's basically a virtual movie theater. Um, I know that was a bit quick, but I, I don't want to spend too long on this. So, yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank you, Mark, for showing some of the progresses that you made through the program. That's always been always been very impressive with you. And I'm sure through LandCheck's program, you're going to be able to develop this app even more. Um, my follow-up question is about the one-minute video, which I know that several parents have asked as well if you can share it. So maybe you can um, first tell us uh, how did you put uh, this app how this hub design or past project have uh, um, influenced your one minute video, if you put all of this information into the video um, or just overall how you made the video, if it needs to be a like fancy type of video, how much time you spend to make the video, just provide as much information as you can if it's possible to the audience so they will know what to expect in terms of making the video, how much time and resources they need to allocate for it. Uh, so yeah, my video was fairly simple, but there's a reason for that. So if I think a good thing to do that I recommend is just search up launch 2020 or 2019 uh, accepted videos, and you'll find, you know, 10 or 12 videos of, you know, amazing candidates. So the thing is their videos were a bit longer because they had, I think 30 more seconds to work with, but you can also kind of copy their style and put it into your own video. So the thing I noticed was that everyone or most people were like wearing suits or, you know, dress shirts and be kind of giving a formal element. And you want to kind of contrast that. So instead, I just wore this T-shirt I'm wearing right now and with a simple background, which is this room. And it doesn't really need to be very technical. You know, you can just run it through maybe iMovie or Adobe Premiere Rush, you know, add a few pictures. And there you go. Don't spend too much time on it because they don't want to see, you know, how many cool effects you can create with your video. 
like what they care about is the content. So focus on what you're going to say in the video and then worry about the pictures and any other effects after. But yeah, it can be very simple. Um, if I have a chance, I might show my video to everyone. So. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. And um, um, yeah, that's, I, I'm really in the meantime, some of the question, we have several, so we, might, we should leave some time at the end to address some of them. Um, maybe you can also tell us uh, um, about like after you submitted the material, what, what was the timeline um, in terms of uh, from the lunch X uh, and just overall the next step. So after you submitted all the material for the application um, and how soon did you receive the interview invitation? So I received the acceptance letter in the first week of April. Um, so usually you'll receive it in late March or early April because I have a lot of people, so it might vary. But, and then after, before the program actually starts, you have to do some pre-work. So the pre-work would include opportunity identification, which is what they call it, and some further personality tests and discussion assignments. So this is to help put you into teams because they really want to focus on making the right teams because it's really important to them. So this would take until May. So right now I would have about one month to get all of the pre-work done and then wait until June or July, depending on what section you are until the program starts. And here's a fun thing. Actually, when you're accepted, they'll send you a box with you know a notebook and some Launch X um, gear that you get to keep, I guess. It's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, it should take no more than about three months um, when you submit your application. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, if uh, I know that we're getting several parents asking if you can share the video. Um, so uh, if you have it with you, do you mind sharing it with the audience? Uh, yes, I think, would it be better to send it to everyone after the webinar? Because I'm not sure if sharing screen would make you I mean, the if, best choice. I mean, I think uh, like sharing it through these uh, right now would be ideal. Um, but uh, I mean, it depends if you have it, uh, like uh, if it's easy for you to find um, or not. Yeah, let me just try to find it right now. Um, yeah, it might take a few minutes for me to find. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Like, let's uh, move on. And then uh, if we find it by the end, maybe we can allocate some time as I talked about the FEC. Um, yeah. We love to get to the, um, some in like your um, experience about your interview process so how was the interview um if you can overall walk us through your the interview experience that would be great what did they ask you and just the overall experience yeah so i just want to give some tips to everybody about the interview so the first thing you always want to do is ask, prepare one or two questions to ask your interviewer, because obviously I know this is a common one, but it shows interest and it'll really make them remember you. So here's the catch. They won't ask you if you have any questions. So once you're done the interview, quickly ask, uh, can I ask you a question before they end the meeting? And yeah, then ask away. This, uh, the second thing that I want to tell you guys is that you need to select your interviewer carefully. So. In February, you'll receive an email that says that invites you for an interview and it's a Calendly link. So there will be eight or 10 people you can select to ask you for an interview and they'll have a short summary about themselves, you know, who they are, what they've done with launch X, uh, a bit of personal information about themselves. So there was, I think one girl, she was really excellent. And I think she founded like a medical research company for blood clots. Um, so I actually wanted to her to interview me because she seemed like very seasoned entrepreneur. So the problem is she had over 50 people that she was interviewing. So obviously when you have that many people that someone's going to interview, you don't want to pick them because they're not going to remember you. I mean, try as they might, it's 
virtually impossible. So what you want to do is find a person you're still interested in, but maybe with less people interview that they interview, like 10 or 12. And that's what I did. Um, and the final thing that I want to tell everyone is that this is more of a strategic thing. But also make sure that you don't you that you select your interview time carefully. So for example, the best the worst the worst possible time to have an interview would be right before lunch because not only are they hungry they'll also be really annoyed with you and want to get through the interview as quick as possible and likely won't remember a thing you said so i would say schedule your interview from 2 p.m until 6 or 7 p.m but not too late because obviously they wouldn't be really happy with that either but just always remember, never schedule anything during the lunchtime. Yeah, that's a great tip. I fully agree with you based on my experience. Also, when I had to judge, for instance, start a competition, which happened quite often, I, the interview right before lunch, it's always the one that get the worst grade. So thank you for the, I feel like you provided great tips to everyone. Um, I think we have your video, so maybe I think Kate can share it with the audience right now. So I know that we've got several questions about it, so that's great that we can share it right now. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm a grade 10 student from Toronto, Canada. I believe I can make a bang at lunch X, and here's why. Number one, I'm innovative. I always like to look at my ideas and create something out of them to help solve real world situations. I am working on an app that helps you connect with your friends and have fun during these tough times by enabling you to watch movies virtually and order fruit from the comfort of your own home. Number two, I'm collaborative. A few months ago, two of my partners and I created an exercise app that allowed you to exercise and compete against your friends virtually through a point system. Not only do you get to exercise, you also get to interact with your friends. Number three, I'm a great team player. Through being on many sports teams and orchestras, I'm able to fit in any role the team needs me to be, whether it's a leader or a supporter. I'm very versatile and able to adapt to any situation. I believe these traits make me a great pick for Launch X. Thank you, and I hope to hear from you soon. That's awesome. I like. To I just wanted to add. Yeah, I just want to add something quickly. Um, you might notice I'm talking kind of fast, but the reason for that is only you have 60 seconds to work with and you want to kind of pack as much content in as you want. So yeah, that's kind of, you want to be able to talk fast. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we have other questions for you. Um, the third question is, what is the most difficult things you experienced during the application? Yeah, I would say it's definitely the video um, because you always want to get started early. But also when you watch, well, because my strategy was that I would watch people's videos and try to kind of mimic them to, in order to kind of fit their style. But see, the problem is some of these people are super intense. I think there was like one girl who worked at Microsoft when she was 12, had like an internship, and then someone else had like $6,000 in sales from selling stuffed animals. So I guess it's, it's kind of tough to, you know, knowing you're up against these kinds of people, but also the fact that sometimes you might doubt yourself, you know, kind of whether are my experience is good enough for launch X, um, but never doubt yourself because sometimes you can be your biggest enemy. So I would say start the video early, you know, maybe watch one or two people that you like, but don't focus on, you know, oh, I could be so much better. These people are so much better than me. Never think that way. Always try to bring yourself up and you, you'll have a great time making the video. So. Great. Thank you, Mark. Um, let's go. We have other, another question. Um, if you can provide some tips for top summer program applications. So just based on your experience, if you have any tip for people who want to apply as you? Yeah, so the most important thing in my opinion is that you need to start early because, so first of all, most summer programs like LaunchX will have, uh, you know, early admissions. 
And this would increase our chances of acceptance greatly. But that's not really what I think is the most important. It's just kind of something to keep in mind. I think one of the most important things for people like high schoolers is that, you know, actively seek opportunities in school. I mean, I know I've already mentioned this, but, you know, joining an executive club or, or being an executive in a club or creating your own club, which is even better, would make you stand out significantly. Because in the application, there's actually a section that says, you know, what entrepreneur, entrepreneurial work have you done in school? And I think that's what you can put there. And the final thing is that just put yourself out there because, you know, if you're not sure whether you want to apply to something or not, I would definitely say go for it because you're not other than, you know, a 50 or $60 application fee, you're not really losing anything else. And you might actually gain some experience or knowledge or interest along the way. So this isn't to say apply for as many summer schools as you can. That's not really healthy, but, you know, find, you know, maybe three or four programs you like and just go for it because chances are you will get in. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Um, so let me ask you something. Did you have, you said you didn't, you didn't have any entrepreneurial experience, right? Before FEC, am I right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, the first project we've done, it was through the Future Entrepreneur Challenge. Yeah. And you also took the UX design course. Um, did you use those skill sets to make your, the prototype that you shot through the video? Yeah, definitely. This case, um, I think, oh, sorry, what was the last part? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was just yeah. asking like if you use the, some of the content uh, as case uh, you learned through the UX design course uh, to build, because I was quite impressed when I saw the video, you share another app that you were building. So I was just wondering like, uh, when did you have the time to make that? Because again, there was uh, something uh, else rather than the one you did on FEC and so I'd like to learn a bit more about it, if you can share your experience. Yeah, okay. So from the UX design course, um, so when you're in FEC, you'll have one week where uh, you'll, you'll learn a bit about UX design and some of the basics. So, but when you take the actual course, it's a lot more advanced and complex. So uh, maybe some of you have heard of something like uh, apps like Balsamic, Marvel, and Figma. So you'll use those to create your prototype or your app. And that's what I used. But you can also just, I guess, tinker around with a lot of the features and kind of build your own apps in your spare time. Um, I know, uh, Massey, you just mentioned that um, when did I have the time to build this? See, I don't really remember you know, setting out like a two or three hour block of my time on a Sunday. It's kind of, you know, you kind of, piece together, you know, your 15 minute breaks from school or whenever you're free to kind of work on it. And eventually it'll go a long way like you saw in the video. No, that's true. And I think one of the reasons why I ask you that question is because I feel like it's very important nowadays if you learn certain tool, like you mentioned, Balsamic, Figma, Marvel, those are all tools that allows you to build a Inter user interfaces like the one Mark showed throughout the video uh, for both his fitness app or the other app he made for lunch X. So the reason why, again, that's very important is because if you learn how to use those tools, then you'll be able, after you become proficient with it, to make MVP, minimum viable product or graphic interfaces just in a few minutes, right? So Mark, I guess right now, whatever app you decide to make next, you'll be able to design it pretty easily within probably hours. How long does it take you to make a full user interface? Uh, so for the UX design app that was in the video, uh, I would say it took me about a total of six or eight hours, um, not including the, pr the time we had in the program. And what's the process? How do you, like, how do you design it? Can you tell us the process from start to end? Yeah. So from the very beginning, you actually don't even use any apps or technologies. You just take a piece of paper and you kind of draw out some hand sketches. It's very, very basic. And then after that, you would go on to uh, a wireframing app such as Balsamic, which is a bit improved from your paper sketches, but 
not completely advanced like the prototype or the app or the final app. And this is the what you might call the rough draft. So then after you would take those ideas, kind of smoothen them up, smoothen them up, and then transfer them into a low fidelity prototyping app such as Marvel, where it looks a lot cleaner, shinier, smoother, whatever word you want to use, but a lot more functional. And then that might seem like the final step, but it's not because you, you can actually edit the user flow to make any more, uh, I guess, improvements to your app, but it's also a lot more free. You can do a lot more with it. The final step is using Figma, which is the high fidelity prototyping app. And this is where everything comes into play. You take all your work and it actually looks like a real app and you can make so many minute edits with it. It's incredible. So it's almost like you're working with, you know, maybe a $20,000 on a $20,000 iMac. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Did you manage to interview some uh, to test your assumptions, some of the screen with uh, your potential customer? Yeah, this is an important part as well. Um, I actually really liked interviewing people um, because I guess I'm really extroverted, but also because I like to collect customer feedback and analyze it. So yeah, UX design isn't just about the designing part, but it's also equally about the customer interaction. And this is basically taking the feedback and using it to improve your app. So it seems like a fairly trivial process, but sometimes the feedback can be really, really negative and not helpful at all. But other times you can actually use it to improve your app. So it's interesting to see how you can adapt with customer feedback. Nice. Yeah, you are making me very proud, Mark. Uh, that's exactly what we learn at FEC. And I'm sure that the lunch hacks that are going to iterate these uh, learnings. In fact, from an entrepreneur standpoint, it's very important to be able to listen to user feedback and test every single assumption that you make. And that's really why like this process you just uh, uh, mentioned in terms of coming up with creating user design and user interfaces, it's very important because you don't want to spend too much time to build it uh, on Figma first, right? Without getting the necessary feedback from the user. And that's why you go from hand sketches to low fidelity mockups to then more advanced graphic interfaces because you don't want to spend much time until you have enough feedback and again you are making me very proud to hear that that you're following the process correctly and you are in 10th grade i guess so i i have high expectation for your future career um i can also provide some tips in terms of uh, um, um how to get into summer school um for me i would say like i can first um, my free suggestion is obviously start doing your research. Uh, that's very important. There are a lot of programs. Some of them are more famous, like the MIT Lanchess program. But I've also experienced in the past few years, great programs that are not as famous um, and that are coming up right now. So do your research and find the one that you believe it will provide you the most learnings. Uh, just don't focus on the name specifically. That's my suggestion because, again, I judged I mentor in several programs throughout the past 10 years, and some of them are extremely valuable despite not as famous yet. Um, so really first make it like a kind of build your learning objective. What are you trying to take away from the program? And based on that, do your research. Second is choose your references carefully because what I've seen and a lot of time people like rush into finding like people to get references from, but you wanna make sure that you first use ask people that um, are relevant to the program. So I was very happy to provide Mark and the other FEC students the reference letters for the program. But I have also seen before that a lot of students have asked contact or um, people that weren't too relevant for them. And uh, I do have experience in the committee side of, comp of programs like lunch hacks and uh, the reference letters are very important. So we actually always looked like who brought those reference letter, why is that relevant? And uh, so don't rush it. Do your research also of finding the right people to refer you to those programs. And lastly, tell a compelling story. It's all about 
the, like their decision making process on accepting students is about the value you can provide to the class, right? To their program. So they find people that are coachable and that are good in working with team. So tell the, a compelling story of why you are, you are the right person. You can do that through the interview, through any stage of the application. But the goal for you is make you stand out in the application process and telling them why you and not other people, right? Why you are the right fit to provide value to their program. Also, um, in terms of overall, like my tips on why um, entrepreneurship, I have, uh, uh, again, through my experience, work with a lot of students um, that's like peak entrepreneurship, not just for their passion, but also for um, being able to stand out in their college application, not just summer program. And what I've seen, right, also working with school admission officer is really that school admission officer, they really value students that try to start a business and to solve relevant problems throughout their youth. And the reason why is because one, even a failed business attempt show the students drive creativity and leadership skill, and also the ability to identify problem and to want to provide impact, right, to the world. Also, they, most colleges and uh, summer program, they always look for students that are leaders. And what's better way to show your leadership skills than starting a company? And lastly, just being able to take a risk. Like starting a business is way more riskier than uh, joining, for instance, a club or a student government association or any type of volunteering activity, right? Because starting a real business, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and time and perhaps money. So even a failed business, it was is still seen as positive from any school admission officer. Um, also provide great opportunity for growth. And I'm very happy. Mark is a great example of it. When I first met him, it was, uh, he didn't really have much experience. He was extremely talented. So I knew he was going to be a great entrepreneur in the future, but I really seen, saw him grow. And uh, not just him, most of our under students that went through the program and just also students that I mentored uh, one-on-one, it always made me extremely happy to see the growth that they get when they start their entrepreneurial career. First of all, War, real war engagement, right? Students, by interviewing real prospect, customer, they learn so much about how, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Also, like uh, developing confidence, leadership skills and teamwork skills. We have a lot of students that start, join FSC, very shy. Uh, they don't really like to talk, do public speaking or to engage during classes. But as the course goes on, we've seen great improvement there people that really started to speak up, to engage, uh, to be confident. And then when they present, they come up with their idea, if they're passionate about the problem they wanna solve, really see like people shine, which is what makes me the happiest, honestly. I'm really proud of being able to teach this course. Um, also get the entrepreneur mindset, which means be able to um, never give up, right? Like keep pursuing your goals, never look back and just keep like, pushing, which is uh, something that in life, no matter what you decide to do, it will always be very beneficial to you, wherever career you pick, not just even if you are, don't want to be an entrepreneur, having an entrepreneurship mindset, the entrepreneur mindset is going to help you no matter what. Learn how to be real products. Again, Mark provide a great example of it, learning certain skill set and tools that can help you in the future to build products, not to always have to hire other people and spend a lot of money, but just become tech friendly, become um, learning the skills to build solutions to problem you experience, which in my opinion is extremely important, relevant, and really give you the freedom of being able to be independent, right? Not to always having to look for help, everything you want to build. Public speaking is also something extremely relevant for entrepreneurs. You need to learn how to sell your story, to sell your vision. So I think 
having any type of entrepreneurial experience greatly help you there. And I'm a great example of it. I was quite shy too when I was younger. I didn't really like to speak in public, especially when I moved to United States, my English wasn't perfect. And I was just always shy talking in front of people, but uh, being able to like learn and be able to present my story, my product, my solution really helped me to become more and more confident in my skill set and myself. And lastly, there's connecting to like uh, minded peers. Uh, again, uh, programs like LunchX, uh, FEC, that's one of the core value, right? Meeting people, students like you that wants to provide impact to the world, wants to build cool products and building long lasting relationship with them is one of the core value of all this entrepreneurial program as well as opportunity to network and gain exposure. So not just meeting like-minded peers like you, but also meeting mentors, uh, entrepreneurs that are more experienced, judges, investors, people that no matter what, like in your future career can also be help, uh, helpful and can be great connections to like trade notes and get uh, a job offer or whatever they might be. So yeah, um, again, first of all, thank you so much, Mark, for telling us about your experience. Um, other than Mark, we are very happy to announce that uh, every single students that have taken um, our 2020 FSC uh, fall program have been admitted to MIT Lunch X. So Mark is a great example of it, but we have several students that got in and that makes me very happy that most of them will continue their entrepreneurial career. A bit about FSC, I know that we've got several questions from um, the audience about FEC in terms of the structure. So let me give you a quick overview uh, to help you better um, have a better vision about what FEC does and who we are. So FEC is a program specifically uh, targeting to high school and middle school students where we provide mentorship and through an eight to 10 weeks course, we help students to learn the basic of entrepreneurship by one, partnering up with like-minded students. And uh, so meeting with it's, uh, always students working groups of three, four people um, in order to come up with a business idea. So we start by first identifying a problem that it's students care about and then coming up with a solution, all based on real feedback, right? So a huge part of the program is talking to customer, learning from, um, like getting feedback from customer, validating every single assumption and really build a product based on customer feedback. The second of um, students receive instruction, mentorship from entrepreneurs and leaders in the space. So we have designers joining the program as guest speaker, uh, engineers, software engineers, um, public speakers, entrepreneurs, investors, all people that join the program and offer mentorship to the students, either one-on-one or as a guest speaker to the program to offer specific uh, tips and to talk about their experience and provide content in specific area that we believe are extremely relevant for entrepreneurs, such as UX design, coding, and customer acquisitions, business models, and so on. And the program always end with a presentation in front of a panel of Silicon Valley investors. So the goal from the students is to present their business idea in front of real investors to get feedback from them, maybe money in some occasion, who knows, and uh, if their idea is very good. And just to have a real experience about what it takes, uh, what entrepreneur, experienced entrepreneurs do, right? Presenting and try to raise funding from investors. So that's always the end of the program. Um, the program, we've been running it uh, now for um, almost two years. Uh, we've been, first of all, uh, as you can see here, uh, the program started as a summer program through B uh, Bay, which is a, pro a summer program in partnership with Berkeley. And um, we also partner up uh, uh, through FEC with several school districts, one of which is Freeman Union High School District. Um, we have done uh, in-house cohort. And now since COVID started, the program mainly moved online. And since then we've done, I guess, over 15 cohorts. Uh, we had uh, four plus under students, uh, I think 423 students. We serve community, Asian, Muslim, African-American, Hispanic, uh, low-income community, uh, 
and we really try to help as many people as possible. I'm a strong believer that people can really, entrepreneurship can help a lot of students uh, finding their passion. And uh, just no matter from which community you are from, your income level, but I've seen a lot of students that as soon as they started building something they love, then I've seen people like, again, get into top university, becoming extremely successful entrepreneurs, uh, even though they may have been struggling during high school or middle school and just finding the right uh, path, right? Uh, we partner up with a school district like Freeman Junior High, as mentioned, Eastside Union High School, the Anza College, Baco, Havero High School, uh, Muslim Community Association, uh, West Valley Muslim Association, College Track, and many more. Uh, in terms of the program, we actually have three core program for FEC. Phase one, which is our initial program, is, is usually about a two, one to two month program. Um, we target, it's usually divided in eight to 10 modules. So starting again, how to identify problem, how to create a solution, how to talk to customer, conduct customer interview. Uh, we also do basics of design and coding. So how to create UX design, how to build a real prototype, uh, how to do marketing, customer acquisition strategy, how to build financial modeling and so on. So all the core um, modules that entrepreneurs needs to know in order to, again, to start a business. For teams that want to pursue their idea and we believe are, have potential to actually be successful in the real world, we have an accelerator program throughout the summer. It's usually a two month program um, where we work directly with the students in order to not just to actually get uh, validation for their app, get users and just launch their app into the marketplace. So the goal for the accelerator is just working one-on-one -on -one with the teams to first build their business model in a way that they can raise funding from investor, but also to launch their prototype and to get traction and users um, and to identify the right funnels for marketing, sales, and so on. And for teams that launch the product and want to continue their goals and we participate to business challenges, a business competition like Diamond Challenge, Blue Ocean, and also startup competitions. We also provide a mentorship program, um, a one-on-one -on -one mentorship where uh, myself and a team of mentors work directly with the teams throughout uh, it can be 10 months to a year to um, specific level three plus months, sorry, to specifically um, like help the students to win these competitions and keep growing their business. We also have other programs um, specifically targeting to unique skill set, such as UX design, where as Mark mentioned earlier, we help students through uh, Donji is our great instructor, is a very experienced designer, and it teaches students how to build uh, user interfaces, uh, user experience mockups. It teaches a few tools that are very important for students to learn, such as Balsamic, Figma, Marvel. Um, we also have presentation skills programs, where specifically Ethan, who is our instructor, also very successful entrepreneurs, teaches students the key concept of public speaking, and um, students through the program really master the, the presentation skill set, especially focused for on startups. Uh, we also have digital marketing and financial modeling programs uh, for students that want to become marketers or uh, want to be in the finance uh, space in the future. So we try to cover all the core um, skills and um, content for entrepreneurs. Uh, in terms of the summer schedule, we'll have uh, the phase one. Um, it will be on Tuesday and Thursday, starting on June 8th, uh, all the way till um, there will be a five weeks program. It will go through July 8th. And the second session will be through July 13th till August 12th. Both programs will be five weeks long, twice a week. Um, so again, I will be the core instructor. We'll have guest speaker, we'll have mentors and investors to judge the final competition. Our accelerator program will be starting on June 11th and it will go over to August 7th. So it will be an eight weeks program. Uh, we also have the presentation skills program taught by Ethan. We start, will be 
Tuesday and Friday from 6 p.m. every week, starting on June 15 till uh, August 6. And the UX design, the first phase by uh, Donji, it will be Tuesday and Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Session one starting June 8th to, uh, is a three weeks long to uh, June 22nd. Session two, July 6th to July 20. And the third session will be August 3rd to August 17th. And while the phase two, which is a summer internship where students can actually work for a real company and test their um, skill set along with the company. It will start on June 30th till uh, August 11th. It will be a six week program. Uh, if you are interested, please, you can scan the code. Uh, you can reach out to Mrs. Lin at uh, um, the phone number you see on the screen. Send us an email at info at harmonyplus.org or again, you can connect us on WeChat and scan the QR code over here. Um, now let's leave a bit of time. I know that we are running already a bit late, so I'll try to be quick in addressing some of the questions. Um, we'll start, let me go over. Um, we've got a lot of questions in the, in the chat. So which grade Mark is in? We already answered his 10th grade. Um, Lunch X uh, is the MIT affiliate, it is. Um, so one question for Mark, what made you outstanding among other applicants? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually not sure what the other applicants looked like, but what I can say for myself is that you need to you need to have a way for people to remember you. So what I did was I tried to make myself remember through the interview. Uh, maybe, you know, your video might be super well done, you know, really fancy, but also the content's great. But it, there's no really rhyme or reason to how you might stand out. It's all about kind of how you want to stand out. So I just, yeah, you know, like I said before, I just wanted the person interviewing me to remember me and I think that actually helped. So I, I'm not really able to answer your question directly, but I can kind of say, just kind of make yourself stand out in your own way. Yeah, and, and I can answer that too. Um, I think uh, Mark is very humble, but based on my experience in the committees, really what the, um, made Mark stand out, I think is first of all, his mindset, it shows in the video, uh, really for the skill set. So I show that he actually knows already right how to build mockups for his apps, which is something that is very valued because it shows really that that's something you already learned before. So it's not just something that you uh, want to experience first and land checks, but is um, you're already passionate about, you already know skill sets in the space that can help you to succeed. So from their standpoint, they might think, okay, Mark, when we put him with teams for lunch checks, he will he already has experience in certain, he already has skill set that can help his team, right? Because maybe they will put him in teams that there is no one that knows how to design an app and Mark will be in charge of that. So he already, they already see him as valuable to his team, which is really the goal. You need to be able, and that was one of my suggestions to write, be able to tell a story of why you can provide value to the program. So you want to show what is your skill set that can be helpful for your team and for the programs. And, why, and that's why I think Mark was a great candidate for them because they already see, saw him uh, like possessing certain skill set that will be extremely valuable to them. Um, all right, other question. Again, for Mark, what did you do the summer after ninth grade? And also, if you have, uh, what clubs did you do at school? Um, I actually, to be honest, I think FEC with Harmony Plus was the first summer program I attended. Um, other than school, uh, extracurricular school, or like school, uh, summer school, like actually summer school, um, I don't recall doing anything particularly significant. Um, it was, yeah, it was just summer classes. Um, but at school, I'm uh, currently a member of 
my school's leaders collective and the music council and i'm also a general member in deca great also to follow up on that uh, um also for you mark how long uh, did you attend uh, FEC classes from Harmony Plus. I think you did the um, uh, eight weeks, eight weeks, sorry, eight modules session last, last summer, right? Yeah, so there was, uh, yeah, the eight module um, phase one for FEC. And then there was the four week UX design program with Donji. And then there was also the four week public speaking uh, course with Ethan. Okay. Um, all right, other question. People are interested of where you can do the personality test. I don't know if you have any information on that. I know that some of the, sometimes you can just Google different personality tests and you can do the free assessment on just online. Yeah. So if you, uh, actually I can find it right now, but if you search up 16 personalities on Google, um, you'll find it. It's the very first link, uh, 16personalities.com. I will just put that in the chat for everyone. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, no, it's completely free. And um, you can pay for additional features like, you know, in-depth personality assessment, but that's not really necessary. Um, like all the good content is completely free. So. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Um, maybe we have time for one or two more questions. Um, how does Harmony Plus programs can help out? Um, okay. I've, before actually answering that, I know that are asking, Jalani is asking for the personality test link. At, um, she, he put it on the, um, on the chat. I don't know if you can see it, Mark. Uh, posted the link on the chat. Yeah, we just reposted it for your reference. Hopefully you can see it. Um, all right, so uh, in terms of that, the, uh, um, yeah, in terms of the programs from Harmony Plus, to give you a quick answer, it's really like, we have programs that range, again, between soft skills, more STEM related programs, project-based programs. So it really depends on what you are trying to um, to get for like what type of learning you're looking for. Um, in terms of all the program we have for entrepreneurship, which is FEC, UX, public speakings. Really our goal is to provide you enough skill sets for students to first learn how to build real product. So get the skill set in your life to not just identify problem and solving the problem, but also to have the necessary skill sets to build the product, right? Not to having to hire anyone, to be independent into solving problems, which is to me the most important aspect of it. Uh, because if you, every time you have an idea, you need to look for someone to help you to build it. Most of the time it's gonna be already too late after that. So um, being able to build it by yourself, it's extremely valuable. And uh, that's one of our goal. And second also to teach you the mindset needed for an entrepreneur being customer oriented, validate all the assumptions you have, every knowledge in customer acquisition, financial model, co modeling, coding, and so on. Being confident, learn how to sell your story through our um, public speaking courses. So you can have the best idea ever, but if you don't know how to sell your idea, then you are gonna have a hard time, right? So we want to also help you to tell your story in the most compelling way as possible. At overall, learning the, all the core skills that an entrepreneur should have. Um, all right, I guess we are done with today's webinar. So thank you all for attending today's webinar. I hope um, we were able to answer most of your questions to give you a, quick, a good overview about what it takes for you and your child to get admitted to LunchX. We would like to really thank Mark for being our guest speaker today. It was great, I really appreciate it. And um, it was great seeing you and I wish you the very best for your future entrepreneurial experience this summer in LunchX and look forward to see your career moving forward. And um, I'd like to thank Harmony Plus as well.
for having me as a host. And uh, if any of you have questions for me specifically, you can reach out to me at Massey at harmonyplus.org. Um, we'd love to meet you and your kids for FEC this summer and uh, have a great rest of the weekend. Thank you so much, Massey. And thank you, Mark, for your detailed sharing. I think you really inspire a lot of students. And I'm Kate. I'm the VP of programs here at Harmony Plus and also the organizer of all the entrepreneurship programs. Um, so if any parents, because we, we see today there's lots of que um, questions in the chat box. So sorry if we missed that question or we cannot answer that. But I'm willing to stay for another 10 or 15 minutes. You know, if any parents want to stay and uh, raise any questions, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, again, thank you so much, Mark and Massey. Have a great weekend. Yes, yeah, some parents ask whether we will send a recording of this webinar. Um, I think really um, we benefit all the you know students and parents. Um, so yes, uh, if you'd like to have the recording of the webinar, you can send an email to me directly and I will um, for sure share that with you once it's ready. So I just uh, leave my email address in the chat box. Okay, and some parents ask, um, uh, do we have any class detailed information? Um, so I think I'm going to maybe reshare all the summer course schedule here. I can reshare this. And parents, maybe you can just take a screenshot or contact me directly or send call us or send us an email. Um, so this is the all the entrepreneurship programs we are going to offer this summer. Um, and parents ask, you know, what's the difference between those programs? So Mark, as the student, um, he really liked the program. So he took all of them actually starting from last summer and all the way till now. So uh, for FEC phase one is uh, what Mark took last summer. Basically, it's the, um, the starting point for any students who are interested in entrepreneurship. And you are going to develop your business ideas and also learn how to build the prototype in this program. And after the program, you also have the chance to present your business ideas to a panel of Silicon Valley investors. And I, I see lots of students use our phase one program um, as the uh, kind of the, the start point of their own entrepreneurship experience and uh, uh, the starting point to build their own uh, real company. And also when they use the FEC experience to apply for lots of summer schools, you know, we hear very good news from them, whether from um, MIT Launch X or, you know, UPenn, Wharton, a lot of business and entrepreneurship uh, programs. So definitely I think um, because we help the students develop the real project instead of just the staying on business ideas. So that's why I can make our students really stand out uh, in those uh, summer school applications. And for phase two programs, some parents also ask, you know, whether um, your kids can join without the, uh, the phase one program. You know, the answer is depend, depends on your kids level right now. A majority of the students, they still need to go over the phase one program to speak the same language you know, as other students in phase two program. But some students, if you already received the training you know, from some top summer schools uh, here in the United States, you, know, you may talk to me directly and we are going to do the assessment for your level. And then if you already have a team by yourself, then maybe there's a chance for um, us to welcome you into our accelerator program. So for the accelerator program, as Massey mentioned, it will be uh, group coaching. So which means that we will um, have the right mentors with the right resources to sup uh, support different companies or different you know, startup teams. And uh, it's a eight week program. So after the program, you will see the prototype of your product ready and then do the deep customer and market validation. Um, and then later, you know, in the fall semester, we also have the phase three program, uh, which we took students to um, like this year, we took uh, um, uh, three teams into the uh, top business competitions uh, like Diamond Challenge, and they all did very well into the um, semifinals for, you know, the regional final pitch event. And also uh, we have two teams that are going to launch their product uh, very soon in the end of April and the other is like um, the beginning of May. So parents ask, you know, whether for Mark's project, whether we can also support to really launch the real product. Um, the answer is yes. So they're in the phase three program. Um, and once those, you know, team products are ready, we're also very happy to share with other parents. And sometimes they start to already have the beta tester in the stage. 
And then for the presentation skills and UX design courses, they're just the um, um, small modules in the vertical line um, under FEC. So if you're super interested in develop the product like Mark, so Mark did a very good job in the UX design course. And then Mark is also applying for the internship, the phase two program right now. And for presentation skills, you know, it's just for you to learn how to pitch and understand the business model of other union core companies here in Silicon Valley. So um, those are all great programs and you can start from any of them. Yeah, let me see. Okay, some parents ask, what is the time of the day for FEC2 group coaching? Um, so it really depends. Every week we will set time for different groups to meet. So the frequency will be one or two meetings per week. And what's the class size? Um, so for FEC phase one program, you know, it depends. Sometimes with the school district, we have the class size of even 50 to 80 students, but for our open enrollment programs, you know, usually the class size will be 20 to 30 students per cohort. Um, and then for phase two and phase three programs, you know, uh, it depends on how many teams we admit. Last summer, we um, accelerated six teams in total. Yeah, uh, if you have any other questions, um, yeah, you can feel free to leave in the chat box. Oh, some parents ask, you know, whether um, you can join two programs at the same time. The answer is yes. Uh, for the overlapping time, you know, we will make sure because for presentation skills, we run that every week because we have lots of students interested in that. Um, so it will be a like boot camp uh, from Tuesday to Friday every week. So you can definitely participate after you know the phase one program or before the phase one program. And we also offer different kinds of sessions during the summer. And how to sign up summer 2021 programs, um, please contact us through whether email or, you know, um, or the, the phone number, uh, and we are going to share the sign up forms with you. Um, one parent also asked whether we only offer FEC during the summer. No, it's like all year round. So summer we will have more sessions because students have more free time, but we also have co different cohorts like for every month. Um, actually, fall semester, spring semester, we all do a lot of um, cohorts. So like Massey mentioned, uh, last year we run, I think, uh, 15 or 16 cohorts in total. Can phase one and phase two take at the same time? The answer is no, because students, they need to at least um, learn the fundamental knowledge about entrepreneurship. And then, you know, um, you have a team to uh, apply for phase two program. So the answer is no. Um, but we are going to offer phase two as well in the fall semester, you know, depends on how many teams are qualified and we're going to send out invitations. So if you want to start, you can definitely start with phase one in the summer. And then if you have the right team and you want to go further, you can continue in the fall semester. Yes, the summer program is virtual this year, you know, this summer um, uh, still virtual. Um, but for next summer or the fall semester, you know, if the pandemic is like, um, you know, everything is okay. Uh, we also have the office, have classrooms here in Mountain View, Silicon Valley. So for the local Bay Area students, you also have the chance to take the program on site. Are you accepting eighth graders? Um, yeah, so we're going to do the interview with the student. And the, the youngest of now we admit into phase one program is seventh graders. All right, yeah, thank you so much for all the parents staying with us. If you have more questions, um, yeah, you can um, just reach out to us later. Yeah, thank you so much. A few questions in the Q&A sessions. Uh... Oh, more questions here? I mean, I know that a few people have asked how to sign up to FEC summer program, if there is a link. Yeah, uh, so you can just contact us, you know, 
Um, we're trying to get those links, you know, maybe our next week we will publish, but if you want to know more about that, definitely reach out to us through email. I'm going to retype my email um, here and then you can contact me directly. Yeah, also I put it uh, one link you can use. Um, yeah, okay. Also okay, one more question. After taking phase two, should students take UX design? Um, actually, you can start with UX design if your your kid is very interested in like STEM or you know developing the real product, you know, and then later into FEC or you can start with FEC and then uh, and take UX design like Mark did last year. Or you can even take it at the same time. We also have students they take it, those two classes at the same time. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you for yeah, all the parents and students stay with us. And in the near future, we're also going to offer more like student cases or um, try to help more kids, um, you know, go to their dream schools. Yeah. And uh, one more thing I want to mention regarding the personality test, uh, Mark uh, shared the link for free one. And we here at Harmony Plus, we also help students do personality tests. So if you're interested in that, you can also reach out to us and we can help arrange the personality test. All right, thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of Saturday. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Nancy. Bye.